there are many different interpretations of the Messiah. The Messiah is the anointed one who is going to be God's intermediary when the eschaton, the end of evil, appears upon this earth. Many different interpretations, but probably the common core, the major one, the one that might be expected without explanation, is that the Messiah would be a warrior king who would liberate his people from imperial oppression. You can think of what happens in Jesus as a paradigm shift in the meaning of Messiah or as a counter Messiah against the violent messianic expectations of some groups within Judaism. To say the obvious, Nazareth is of special interest to Christians. It's where Jesus grew up, of course, and lived most of his life. There's a high degree of probability even that he was born in Nazareth and not in Bethlehem. And if you want to talk about that later, we certainly can. And more importantly than just being about time and place, growing up in Nazareth is what shaped Jesus. So we're talking about the socialization of Jesus when we talk about growing up in Nazareth. Each of us is profoundly shaped by the time and place and people we grow up with, and so it was with Jesus as well. And what I'm going to be talking about tonight is interesting for another reason as well, because it provides a glimpse of a pre-modern agricultural village. And this is how most of our ancestors lived not all that many centuries ago. Now, if some of you are descended from aristocracy for centuries, then this doesn't apply to you. But if we go back 200 years, 300 years, 400 years, this is how the vast majority of people live with only modest changes because of geography or climate or something like that. What was the passion of Jesus? And I'm using the phrase, the passion of Jesus here, not to refer to his suffering and death, as it is sometimes used, but I'm using it in the sense in which we use the word passion when we ask of somebody, what's your passion in life? What are you most passionate about? And the answer for Jesus is, Jesus was most passionate about God and the kingdom of God. Eating is the material basis of life as healing is the spiritual basis of life. So we're talking about the control of spiritual power and physical power. Eating, the Mediterranean knows this, is about who controls your life, because who controls your food. So we're watching Jesus building a new community. I'm going to call it a share community, and I'm going to call an imperial community a greed community. And I'm not saying the Romans are any greedier than any other empire. I'm simply saying that's what empires do. How do I keep mine and take yours? Thank you very much. It's called a greed community. It's the normalcy of civilization. Jesus is building a share community, eating. Let me take an example where I can see it most clearly. This shows up all over the place, by the way. For example, one of the jibes, and therefore probably very authentic, made about John the Baptist and Jesus, is John the Baptist is an ascetic. He's nuts. Jesus comes eating and drinking. He's a glutton and a drunkard. You know, got you, coming or going. So they're glimpsing something about Jesus. He's, he's on the food. I don't think he was a glutton or a drunkard, but he's about food. It's very important that Jesus doesn't bring manna down from heaven, or bread and fish down from heaven, I suppose it'd be messier, or that he turns stones into it. The point is he takes the food that is already there, and when it passes through the hands of Jesus, there is enough for everyone. That's what happens. Now what that means for me is that when 
the food that is already in the earth, upon the earth, passes through the incarnation of divine justice, there is more than enough for everyone. All sorts of stuff left over. More than enough for everyone. We don't get uptight about Jesus making up stories about the kingdom of God. When Jesus wants to say something really serious about God, he makes up a story. The bad habit of doing that was picked up by the gospel writers. They heard about imitating Jesus, and they decided this was good. So they make up stories about Jesus. Jesus makes up stories, parables, to make a statement about the kingdom of God, they make up ones about Jesus. One fast example. A parable about Jesus, that is, a story that was made up about Jesus, that is, a story that they knew was made up about Jesus. Not say, well, they were trying to tell a piece of history, but we're so smart, we won't believe it. The walking on the waters. Go back again to the bar crossing principle of interpretation. Read the text. Don't ask. I don't think Jesus could walk in the world. Nobody can walk him. Read the text. It says, Mark, Jesus sent them out in the boat by themselves. Now, usually they, they hang on Jesus like limpets, and you can, you, you, know, you can never get away from them. But this time he sends them out in the boat by themselves. They get out on the lake now, don't mix this up with the, the stilling of the storm. They get out on the lake, and they find they're rowing like mad and getting nowhere. Then they see Jesus walking on the waters. He's walking on the waters. No trick stuff. It's a miracle in a parable. And they cry out to him. There's the key line. He's just out for a stroll. You know, he's going to go right past them, apparently. They cry out, he gets into the boat, and all of a sudden, they are wherever they want. Now that screams at me. Once you don't get bogged down, do you think that really happened? That screams at me, I'm a parable. Well, what does it mean then? What's the lure for thought? Hmm. The 12 represent either the church or the leadership of the church, as we saw thinking about the uh, multiplication of loaves and fishes. And they're being told if you get into the boat of the church and take off without Jesus, you're getting nowhere. You can row all night and you still won't get anywhere. Get Jesus back in the boat. Now I find that fabulous because it means that by the middle of the first century, they already knew that the church was taking off without Jesus in the boat. And I thought we only learned that recently. 